Now to the nerve racked tense rhythm of insecurity in the southeast. You could be forgiven for saying that insecurity in the region has gone absolutely bananas. Violence and kidnapping by unknown gunmen and retaliatory officially sanctioned counter-violence by the security agencies is now the order of the day in many parts, with ordinary people collapsing under the weight of the onslaught. But now a non-partisan advocacy group known as Peace in the Southeast Project has made an impassioned public assertion that the defeat of insecurity in the Southeast is vital if every part of the region is to be prevented from falling like a row of dominoes and the once prosperous zone is to be restored to rights. But they say rooting insecurity out of the Southeast can't be done through the barrel of a gun. So what exactly are they proposing? Well, to get a better sense of their plan and proposal, I'm joined now in the studio by the coordinator of Peace in the Southeast Project, Ubunda Ukuku, and the group's director of media, Mary Ikoku. Thank you very much indeed to both of you for coming in. All right, thanks for having us. Um, is it fair to say that the Southeast is currently suffering disproportionately from the consequences of widespread insecurity? Oh, that's, um, I'm looking for a better way to put that, but I mean, whether we like it or not, as it stands today, most of the driving economic you know, drivers in the Southeast are having issues because they are losing between 10 to $13 billion every day that there's a protest or there's a shutdown of people's businesses. I mean, it's something that is beginning to, you know, affect people's livelihoods and then it's affecting the GDP of the region. So, I mean, any, uh, uh, there's no other way to put it. Uh, you're right. People are facing hardship in the Southeast because of the issues in the, you know, the security challenges happening in the Southeast as we speak. And most people, Mary, would say, I mean, you, you, you have a political career, you've, you've kind of, you know the place very well. I mean, most people would say that it's just absolutely shockingly surprising that the last place you would have thought that this kind of thing would be happening is in the southeast of Nigeria. Oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, the southeast has been known as one section of the country that has enjoyed relative peace. And when you have to tell a story about discordance, insecurity, killings, and all these kind of stories, terrorism, Southeast would never be among the state or the, the section, the region of the country you want to have that conversation around, mm. you know? So what is going on right now is something that actually makes every one of us very uncomfortable because this is not who we are. This is a, a people, uh, the Southeast people are very warm people, people who enjoy uh, their space, a lot of entertainment. They are known for their entrepreneurial mm. spirit. I mean, you can say a whole lot of things about the Southeast, the contact, what you need as a human being to be successful. You need to have huge contact, you have to have competencies, you have to have entrepreneurial spirit, and you have to um, be able to trade and collaborate. The Southeast have all of that. We collaborate, we can move from the Southeast to anywhere. We're one group of people that can live in any part of Nigeria and build our world there, die there, and the only time we get back to the Southeast is when we're dead. You know what I mean? So we are, a, you know, these are a group of very peaceful people. So I won't, I, I get, it's quite concerning mm. to me when you hear stories around Southeast. So that's why, you see, this, Pice P, uh, the Peace in, in South East uh, project. Okay, is that's a, how it's pronounced. Pice P. Pice P. Right. Yeah. So I was wondering how you, you <laughs> pronounce P, it. The P, right. That's Peace in South East yeah, yeah, project. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, obviously, the le longer, longer thing, thing you can thing. tell, but yeah. the, the, the sort of abbreviated version. Yeah. Yes. But I mean, people might wonder, uh, Ubunda, what it is about the Southeast and violence and how attacking your own people helps to advance the cause that the militant groups espouse. Now, um, do, I, do, do I say that people who um, engage in you know, these kind of things are, they don't have the right knowledge or they're being um, 
you know, pushed into this by certain sentiments. Of course, those things exist. And now, is anyone pioneering to see, let's find other ways to make this happen? This is actually why this, you know, uh, this initiative came up. And then being pushed and you know anchored by you know the you know under the leadership of the deputy speaker house of representatives as the you know highest political leader you know political holder in the southeast and he's driving this initiative you know to make sure that um, we get the right narrative you know using using the a non kinetic measure because I mean the militarization you know has you know we've tried it so can we try something else can mm. we engage the people with the stakeholders we, we we having the right people feel the pulse of the people find out is the infrastructure deficit that is the issue i mean there are a lot of international organizations that have gone into the south is to do their own dependent research and some of them have come up with you know with the engagement with the people down in the southeast they will tell you okay we 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 are being um, marginalized you know, we, are, we have issues of infrastructure, we have, we're being neglected, we are not, you know, put in the right positions in the, in, the, in, in the government. So some of these things are issues which this initiative, initiative is going to engage to pioneer to see how we can, you know, get, get more advocacy done so that things can happen in the South. It's not, it does not mean that we don't have issues in other parts of Nigeria. Yes, we do. But, I mean, if, you, if we're talking about setting up, you know, making something work in a particular region, then you can actually copy the same thing in other regions mm. where you have issues. So that's actually how, that's what gave birth to what is happening right, right now on the initiative and right now why we're driving it. Well, I always find it a bit astonishing though, Mary, that people, when they talk about marginalization, I mean, it, it's, you, you, you have governors in those regions and the governors are directly responsible for things like economic development and so on and so forth. That level of government is supposed to touch the people more directly. I mean, I, and I wonder why they're not holding their governors to account and, and talking about the federal government, which is miles away. You know, Charles, that is a very, very interesting one you've thrown. Um, I think it's just very much important that people begin to hold their government accountable. And the focus should not be on federal government alone. Um, I know that in the last uh, couple of years, this is one government, um, President um, Bola Ahmed Tinubu's government, is one government that have, you know, committed to giving a whole lot of money to the states. But what is happening is are the citizens paying attention to how their monies are being expended, both at the state and the federal level. But the focus is on the federal government. But you have the state government, and people need to understand that it is not enough to, to, to carry arms and demonstrate, mm. but it's also about holding people responsible, um, holding your governors responsible, holding your leaders responsible. And it doesn't have to, the, uh, the focus shouldn't be on the federal government. The Southeast is our Southeast. The Southeast is the home you have in Nigeria. I'm a Nigerian, but Southeast cuts to heart because this is, I'm a Nigerian from that uh, extraction. So it makes it very uh, necessary for, for you to begin to think home, begin to say, okay, how is your section of the country being run? What is the cause of the insecurity? Why is the development not happening? Are these, um, these people causing all of this crisis? Mm. Can they not be called to book? Can they, what, what really needs to happen? So it begs the question of why are we not having that roundtable conversation and having it sincerely and beginning to ask ourselves, what role have we played? Our role, role played could be in the area of not saying anything, seeing something and not saying anything or not doing anything at all or just relaxing and becoming an armchair critic to say, hey, they are attacking us. Mm. They hate us. They don't like us. You have to solve your internal hate first. You have to solve your internal problem. And what PISP is doing is a welcome development. And I love this initiative. It makes me very excited because this is one organization that I have thought through. We've looked in the past how issues like this have been handled. Mm. And we want to see a non-kinetic approach, a non-militarized approach to addressing the 
insurgents addressing the insecurity. And then you ask yourself, what are those kinetic approach that this group is coming up with? In the Southeast, I can tell you, Charles, for free, without fear of contradiction. I've been in places where you're traveling on the Southeast road. And if you're going by road, because sometimes government thinks all you need to solve this problem is using military approach. But peace in Southeast is looking at a non-kinetic approach, which is taking away that military approach. However, working in tandem with the military, with mm. the defense, because you, insecurity is not something, it's not one man's problem. It's a collective problem. So the, we, this group is looking at how do we mainstream peace in this region, right. in this manner that doesn't seem offensive. Mm. And it involves advocacy, dialogue, and building pillars that will create the enabling environment that will entrench peace and harmony right. for the people. So, okay, so, so I, I want to just add yeah, something yeah, sure. there. You know, see, there's something um, Hofstede, Hofstede said, uh, Hofstede said, said something about, um, you know, the cultural dimension to solving problems. Now, you need to understand the people to be able to solve a problem of the people. Of the people. Yeah. So if you have a, a, you know, a, a, a microscopic view of how an average Igbo man thinks, you need to understand that it's better for you to negotiate, mm -hmm. have a conversation, engage, you know, so those are the kind of things that work there. So if, if our community, the way we were, we were trained and brought up and the way our culture is, so it's better for you to, you know, just have that conversation. Yeah, but that's, that's why the, the governors in those areas no. who are elected by the people should be the ones who are the, the first level of settling things and then take whatever it is to the federal, to the federal government, government to sort it out. And I'm wondering whether the problems and the challenges in the Southeast are ultimately political problems that can only be solved politically and not militarily. I mean, that's partly what you're saying yes. in this group, isn't it? So my, my point, our point is, or what the initiative is trying mm. to do is to, we've tried the military, it hasn't worked. Of course, let's try this other measure. Let's try this non-kinetic you know, uh, you know, approach and see. And we believe, like that's, a, that's what I said, that's mm. what I was trying to say. If you understand the culture of the people and then the more you engage the people, that's how they feel, you know, they feel that they are, more, they are, they are on the table having a conversation with you. Right. And then they begin to pipe down. If there are issues that have, to, you know, that borders around infrastructure, then bring the infrastructure because these are the kind of conversations. I give you an example. One of the one of the international organizations that carried out, you know, a research in the southeast. One of the things they came up with is some of these people are easily recruited because if you pass conversations to them, if you ask an average uh, Igbo person, he says to you, "Oh, how come I'm importing goods that I'm, that I'm going to sell in the southeast, and I have to go to Lagos to to clear the, clear the goods." I import the goods, I go mm. to Lagos to clear the goods. So these are the kind of narratives. So that's what I'm just talking about infrastructure sure. now. So if that is the case, coach, can we have a seaport somewhere in the southeast? And then those people who those sentiments are affecting, at the end of the day, if you tell them, they say, no, but we have a seaport here. So that's just to give you an example. So mm. these are things that we have to begin to engage our people and at the same time have that advocacy being led i see use the word being led with someone who in his wisdom thinks who has agreed that let's rope this whole entire process around him and he's willing to pioneer and he's leading us right that's the deputy, the deputy speaker, speaker of the house yes right okay well well tell us more about the your approach i mean because you've talked about non-kinetic sort of, uh, you know, methods and so on. I mean, what exactly are you aiming to do and how are you aiming to achieve that? So for you to have, um, so when we look at it from the military approach, I was going to say something earlier. And he, my brother talked about the culture of the people. If you engage the people of the South, it's, it's easier to work with them. And then what, what we have currently is a situation where it, 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 it makes me very sad. When I see on the Southeast Road, if you have to drive from Abuja, if you do a road trip in any part of this country, if you're driving from Lagos or whether you're coming from Abuja or Sokote, wherever, and you're going to the Southeast, you will see the road is free, almost literally free, until you say, once you get into the Southeast, the amount of roadblocks, the amount of military checkpoints, and there's no war here. So that military approach is a way to gag the people. But it doesn't work 
You see, it gets them angry. Mm. So, and you've seen people when you are traveling on the, within the Southeast, say you're going to Enugu from Umaya, and then on the way, at those military checkpoints, our people are made to face very terrible kind of um, dehumanizing uh, situation where you ask people, you have to come down from your vehicle. And I hope the federal government will really take this into consideration. You have to come down from your vehicle. Whether you're a pregnant woman, whether you're a baby, whether you're uh, invalid, whether you're sick, whether you're uh, a, a person with disability, you have to come down from your vehicle, raise your hands up and work past the military checkpoint. And there's so many of those military checkpoints. And what interests me about this grouping is the fact that it is not just being done by a group of professionals. Yeah, we're a group of professionals from the Southeast, but you need the presence, the leadership, and uh, patronship of the leadership from the Southeast. And this is where I totally will always commend uh, the deputy speaker because he's one leader that has really not looked back mm. in. I, I love the pivotal role he plays within this organization and for me I think that insecurity is not a leader, a clergy, a traditional relaxed responsibility. It's a collective responsibility of all of us. So it behoves on the leadership of the five southeastern states including even the South South, to join force with us and see this non-kinetic approach as something that they need to, do, they need to weigh their full support mm. because it's about Southeast. Right. And you asked about the approaches. She's going to give more details on that. But funny enough is to say, what are the problems you need to solve? What causes people to carry arms? Um, you can agree with me that even in the civilized countries, not that we're not civilized, in the most civilized countries, you hear in the Western world, you, you, there is a reason. People who are on unemployment, people who have no jobs, people who, uh, people who are, in, you know, have health challenges, or, or the, there's a reason the government of those countries put them on stipends. There's a reason they are giving food stamps. There's a reason they are giving some kind of um, access to health and all of that because when you don't address those pockets of challenges around those kind of people the idle mind is right. a devil's well worship. to be fair that's They're not so unique to the south it's not it's, it's not a unique to the south east. The south Nigeria. east yes it's a general problem yeah. but the south east we, are, we want to solve that problem using this approach where we are addressing the issue of economy right so we are entrepreneur in in our nature you heard about the 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 the, the, apprenticeship, the system. apprenticeship system right we want to bring that back as a methodology as as, as an approach that's part of the non-kinetic approach right. so you're looking at the economy they are like seven pronged approach so you're looking at the uh, economy you're looking at entertainment culture and tourism their agriculture yeah. and there's so many we can expand leadership on the governance. leadership and governance right. and it's for the leadership and governance we we really need this leadership and governance to be everybody getting involved in mm. what matters to every one of us so really it's a template that can be exported to every to part, every of, part of, Nigeria. of Nigeria. I mean, it really is a development template. Yeah. Yes. And, and what it underscores is the failure of governance and the implementation of development, the right development policies, not just in the Southeast, but across Nigeria. Across but obviously you're talking specifically about the Southeast, about the Southeast because it's generated this kind of insecurity, which has become a problem. Because what I look, okay, look at the budget today. Mm. See how much that has gone into Sec uh, a security, you know, the security budget. See, the more we find alternative ways of providing solutions to security, the more you know you you, you move those funds into more productive, mm. you know, uh, you know, envelopes. Because if you budget more on education, as against security, 
it's better for the society. You build a better society because, I mean, you need a well-informed uh, 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 citizenry to be able to, you know, have a, a you know, a, a, a more a centralized state. Yeah, and obviously to eliminate poverty, you uh, need, more po yeah, you need more people. education. So right. those are the areas where we are going to be focusing on a whole lot when it in, in education, like my colleague mentioned. And then it's going to not just going to be formal; it's going to also be an informal system of education, like we talked about the apprenticeship system in the southeast region. And this is something where looking at developing further so that we can create... Yeah, but how are you going to do all that? Now, the approach, like we said, now this is already existing. Now, um, we need to, um, like I said, we're going to move it further into creating a venture capital system that works. Now, if people will have to serve someone for seven years mm. to, you know, get settled and then you start off your own business, so if we can actually just, you know, get people together people you know who are willing to work you know push them into where they can get trained on a particular trade and then you now be able to support them with some level of funds you know because I mean collectively people are people are pu we're pulling resources together mm. those Igbos in diaspora those Igbos in different parts of the you know parts of the world in different uh, trades and uh, spheres of life so everybody's coming to, so it's a call to every Igbo person. So, this, this, like I said, the engagement has started. We, we're engaging relevant uh, organizations with, uh, with time, as time goes on. Some of this, um, uh, you know, some of this, um, let me, for better word, for lack of better word, some of these MOUs will now begin to turn into, right. you know, actual, actual okay. practical, you know, um, uh, doable well, programs. We've got less than a minute to go. Um, do you, are you optimistic? Do you see that region emerging from this tunnel of darkness anytime soon? Of course. It, the only thing is to keep uh, positive. And um, when you start an initiative like this, is to be forward looking that it will yield the desired result. Mm. And then we've also had, I'm from Abia State, and we've also had uh, a state, um, the Southeast, that we, we've just finished an election and we know that new governors have emerged. And it seems the governors have had their first uh, security um, summit. summit. So they've been kind of... They're starting to engage with each other. Yes, right. we engage okay. with each other. And I think that will help to a, a great extent. Okay. But if they now join force with... Uh, I believe that they... Um, the Pice P right. is something that will be good to the okay. house. I'm also very excited. Well, I, I'm sorry. That, I'm really sorry about this, but, but we're actually out of time. But I want to thank you very much indeed and wish you all the very best. Uh, Ubona Ukuku is the coordinator of Peace in the Southeast Project, and Mary Koku is the director of media. Thank you very much indeed. Right.